For these five entrepreneur teams, it started with a dream to launch a business. After a year of research, presentation, development, and mentorship, their dream may become a reality. Today, they'll have five minutes to pitch their business plan to a panel of experts ready to invest in their futures. From the Fairfield University Charles F. Dolan School of Business, this is Fairfield Startup. In the dancewear industry right now, there is this one image of a dancer, and what that person looks like is they're very tall, they're uh, fairly thin. If you don't fit into that model, it's really hard for you to find something that fits. Um, and personally, for me, uh, I, I am 4'11", uh, and so I am not 5'4", which is kind of the, the standard size for a dancer. For me, it's been very, very hard to find something that fits me. I realized I went to an audition, there was like 500 people there. It's really hard to, to stand out amongst 500 other people, so I was kind of looking at my clothing as I just wish that I had something that would make me stand out. How do I combine, you know, trying to find something that I can wear, that fits me, that looks good on me, that showcases, but also with this philanthropy of dance. And then I came up with the idea of sharing the bar. So sharing the bar is a dancewear social venture aimed at empowering women to love their bodies through offering um, dancers a collection of dancewear that is customized to them. So it's a product that is uniquely your own. Startup veteran Abigail Sockety is bringing her custom apparel to the dancewear industry. Today, she'll present her business, Sharing the Bar, to the Startup Investor Panel. Hi. I'm Abigail Sockety. I'm a senior marketing major at Fairfield University, and I am the founder of Sharing the Bar, dancewear that fits and inspires. The problem with dancewear is that it simply doesn't fit. The, the industry designs for a one-size body that is five foot four, long and lean. However, many dancers come in all different shapes and sizes. I struggled finding dancewear that fit me being four foot 11 and muscularly built. I would either have to buy something that was too big and then tie the straps back with hair elastics, or buy something that was too small and just deal with the discomfort. On top of this issue, dancers strive for perfection, but being surrounded by mirrors, receiving critiques, and wearing something that doesn't fit starts to take a toll on the mental psyche, leading to confidence and self-esteem issues. It wasn't until after I was hired by an entertainment company that I actually felt confident in who I was as a dancer. There is a disconnect between the perfection dancers seek and their dancewear that just doesn't fit. Therefore, I created Sharing the Bar. It is my mission to finally give dancers dancewear that fits and that empowers them to love their bodies and embrace their dance abilities, as there's no one type of dancer. So why would someone want to purchase Sharing the Bar? We offer more sizing variation in both long and short. We offer a premium quality product that is both affordable and world-class. We place an emphasis on empowering dancers through our content, and we offer a Sharing the Bar program, which gives back to organizations that make the bar more inclusive, positive, and inviting for all. The dancewear market is valued at $550 million per year. Of that, premium dance brands make up $200 million per year. Sharing the Bar's objective is to generate revenues of $10 million in five years, capturing 5% market share of that premium dance market. Our solution offers 12 different sizes in both long and short that's of premium quality, that's comfortable and flattering for all body types. And one of the special parts about our product is that sizing is not printed on our materials, but rather attached with a removable tag. So once that tag is gone, there's no sizing to compare. Now the dancewear market is a highly saturated market, but we will differentiate ourselves based on having more sizing variations at an affordable price compared to our competitors. We will be targeting both dancers and their parents as the dancers are the influencers, but the parents ultimately have the buying power. Now our go-to-market strategy is to roll out a limited quantity of inventory to dance studios that will provide credibility and trust among our targeted consumers, but then those dance studios will push consumers interested in buying more product onto our e-commerce site where they'll find the whole line and get to know our brand. Now, in order to boost awareness about our brand, we will be focusing on website optimization, 
targeting our consumers on social media, enlisting brand ambassadors, and partaking in engagement initiatives to generate, uh, continue to build our customer base. Now, Sharing the Bar is not is a manufacturer is a marketing and design company, not a manufacturer. Therefore, we will be partnering with an existing manufacturer of dancewear or athletic wear. We will also be partnering with uh, credible organizations such as Alvin Ailey or another dance company to wear our product and also provide credibility among our customer base. We will also be tapping into influential groups such as Dance Teacher Network and dancers with high following to generate a buzz around our product. Now, as I said, we have a sharing the bar program that gives back to organizations. We give 5% of our sales to organizations such as Ignited Dancers Light and Alvin Ailey Foundation. Now, we cannot ignore what's going on in our environment right now. And that is why we want to give back to dance studio relief funds so that studios don't have to close their doors during this pandemic and that dancers can continue to dance at their love studios long after the pandemic's over. So my team is composed of myself, Abigail Sockety, I'm the founder, Chips DePatcher, who is my mentor, Ali Faniff, who is our artist, and Dirk Dunlap is my manufacturing advisor. Now we are asking for connections to the, uh, the fashion industry to produce our product, legal counsel, assistance in developing our samples, and finally launching our product. Thank you so much for listening to my pitch, and I welcome any feedback and questions you may have. With the presentation complete, it's time for the Startup Investor Panel Discussion. Abigail must impress the panelists to prove that she can lead a startup. Abigail, hi. Hi, how are you? Good, pleasure uh, to see you. Uh, this is uh, Michael, this is Joe and Marianne. We, uh, uh, the three of us very much enjoyed your video. We've watched it multiple times. We just watched it again just now. Presentation was fantastic. We all have a couple of questions, but I want to kick it off with Marianne. Marianne, why don't you uh, start us off? Great. Hi, Abby. So nice to see you again. Um, and you had an excellent uh, presentation. So uh, thank you for um, and, and we really want to commend you on uh, what you're doing. I mean, this as a petite woman, five, two, maybe five, three, I totally understand. So um, I guess we had a couple of questions around your, um, your, your go to market strategy and uh, your inventory. Um, you're talking about that you're going to put a limited amount of inventory out in the stores, um, dance studios, etc. And I guess we're really looking to get a better understanding of that because uh, with having um, so many different sizes, I think you said 12 different sizes that you were looking to make, uh, that could pose a, a major inventory problem and expensive for a company like yours. Now you said you're a design and marketing company, you're going to partner with others, great. Uh, but Tell us, um, you know, tell us what your thoughts are. Uh, part of our, our team, we were really looking at, are you gonna uh, utilize some of these apps that are on the phone that do 3D imaging and then can help a person define what size they might be, they try it on in the store and then order it from your site? You know, share, share with us what your thoughts are there. Yep, absolutely. So um, first of all, so we're doing a lot of research on size so that we can really drill into what sizes really fit um, dancers well. Um, and part of that was, was having 12 sizes. So um, looking at a small set of data, we've kind of identified that one of the points of friction with size is the torso. So usually people's torsos are longer or, or shorter. Um, and so we want to develop um, sizing that is both long and short, similar to a pant size that's long and short. Um, so there's the sizing. Um, so then as far as adoption goes, so we want to roll that out um, to dance studios and in tandem on our website. And these two um, platforms will work really well together um, because as far as dance studios go, so a, a dance teacher is a very credible um, person in, in a dancer's life um, and usually someone that you go to to, to seek advice. Similarly to if, um, if you golf or if you are uh, you play tennis and at your, your club you have your tennis pro, you might go and ask them, you know, what, what racket is best for me? And they'll give you your opinion and you most likely would value that opinion better or more than say if you just went to a, uh, a random store that you find on Google. So there's that little relationship um, with between the studios um, and, and the dancer, which is um, a really great relationship. Um, as far as finding that right size, um, so we we understand that having something 
um, to try on is very important. So our, our thinking is to roll out um, all the sizes to those studios. So they kind of almost take on that inventory, but we won't kind of make it a burden to them uh, because we'll, we'll provide um, a, uh, many different incentives um, for them to, to sell that. Um, and so we'll have um, all those sizes available at the studio so dancers can try them on. Um, and then once you know they find the one that they like, they can go ahead and purchase that on the website. If someone were to enter through our website and not on through a, a dance studio, um, then we would use technology such as Sizer uh, to really make sure that we get that right size so that you know they purchase one and they don't have to do returns um, or anything like that. Great, thank you. Joe, did you have any follow-ups there? Yeah, uh, are you uh, primarily marketing through the dance studios or are you trying to uh, go after a broader market? So we're gonna start obviously off- obviously for some people, uh, dance people are very serious about it, ergo the dance studio. For others, it's you know more of an activity. They do it maybe through grammar school and that's the end of it. You know, there's a much different scenario. Right. So we wanted to start off with partnering with um, dance studios. We've looked into a different, uh, various different distribution channels, um, going to dance stores, selling solely online. Uh, but when it came down to it, selling at um, a retail store, we would have uh, slotting fees, minimums on uh, uh, inventory. So just the cost would really start to inch up. Um, if we went solely e-commerce, that kind of creates some friction because you know then you're really making all your efforts to get people onto the site and for a product that you know is about sizing, it's hard to try something on that's virtual. So we, we're starting off with the studios um, and through them, um, that, that's, that's our main focus, just because of that relationship um, and being able to physically try on those um, outfits. Um, we're, we're looking at various different partners. Um, one partner is um, Alvin Ailey, so partnering with um, uh, com dance companies um, and then having them submit their orders for their dancers as well. Very good. Abigail, I had, I had one question, I, I have several questions, but the one I wanted to save for now, and, and I think the three of us uh, will, will tell you that we are interested in talking to you further. Um, I want to understand the addressable market. You 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 mentioned 200 million, and that uh, you have an aggressive 10 million in, in 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 revenue, which is very aggressive. All right, but my understanding is there's a universe of people that wear dance clothes for the special size five foot four dancer, and you want to go after the I don't know what the percentage is. Is it three percent, ten percent, fifteen percent, twenty percent that are not falling in that? And then based on that percentage, whatever it is, what's the value of that market, and what kind of penetration are you hoping for? Uh, so about a majority or 50% of people don't find dance wear that fits them really well. Um, and so, um, so we will be, you know, 50% of that, of the available um, dancers within there that don't find something that fits them is going to be our, our initial market. From there, you know, we're really penetrating, um, like, when I think of our addressable market, I kind of think of a, a, like a bullseye. So we have that initial really niche um, market that we're really targeting to. But when, you know, adopting a product, you have the funnel. And so you want to have, you know, a lot of people and trickle down to your, your direct people. That, that's what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear your focus on a specific area. Abigail, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Um, very good job on both the video and now. And we look forward to seeing you uh, in the awards round. Awesome. Thank you very much for your time. Fairfield Startup would like to thank our sponsors for continuing to make the annual Startup Showcase possible. Thank you. Sharing the Bar is presented and it's on to the final round. Visit fairfield.edu slash startup to watch all of the 2020 Fairfield Startup Team episodes. Vote for your favorite and tune in next week to see the winner of the CT Next Connecticut Innovations Audience Favorite Award. Thanks for watching Fairfield Startup. This has been a presentation of Fairfield University and the Dolan School of Business.